my contact with Petroyatsk goes back many, many, many years to when I was a teenager. That's when I first met Petroyatsk. And it was through an organization, PLAST. I was also very much involved in this PLAST scouting organization, especially when it came to sport camps. And so we would frequently uh, drive to Grafton and there were times when, when he would chauffeur and he, he would be there himself. So I got to know Petroyatsk pretty well from a personal point of view. And also there was another occasion um, a very meaningful uh, contact that I had with uh, Petroyatsk later in my life when I was in medical school. At one point when I simply went to get a haircut, and this was in the Bloor West Village where Petroyatsk lived, and I lived not very far away, and we met serendipitously at the barber shop. And so we had this really nice personal discussion. We both getting our haircuts. So I, he asked me how life was coming along and I had not seen him in a while. So I informed him of my father's condition and, and that he would probably be passing away. He had a terminal illness. So he did say to me that if I ever needed any help, if I never, ever needed any financial support, that he would be more than willing to help me get through school. And then later we, we would talk about um, some sort of uh, financial plan. So I've never forgotten that. And, and I thought that was such a personal, um, humanitarian um, gesture on his part to help me with my personal development and my education. I'm very grateful for that. Petroyansik was a very um, individual person who had a great drive, great motivation, uh, a love for his country, Ukraine, as well as Canada, but he was a tremendous supporter of, um, of Ukrainian culture and language <clears throat> and literature. When, when it came to our involvement, even physically, even his stature, Toryacek was a Polish man, um, but even his posture was so erect, he always seemed to be in control. He projected this sort of very positive and very constructive image, which always amazed me that he was a force just walking around, quiet or not quiet sometimes, walking around. Um, and, and of course, I would get to know him even on a personal level in his home, because he would sometimes have get-togethers at his home for Plast and, and with his family involved. And so on a number of occasions, I was there in his home personally. This is where his philanthropy comes in. I think this is where his sense of sharing, his sense of sharing his prosperity and the success that he had, together with his drive and motivation to elevate the Ukrainian language and literature and culture, especially in light of what had happened, why he had to flee uh, his homeland in Ukraine and ended up in Germany and then eventually to Canada. So. I think this sort of oppression uh, that was occurring at that time in Ukraine was a motivating factor for him to certainly <clears throat> try to help the cause. Uh, so I, I think this drive and ambition of his, there are many different facets of his character that came together that resulted in all of the work and philanthropy that he did. His personal development, his drive, his motivation, his attitude of sharing, uh, of humanity, uh, and especially of academia. He was very fond, I think, of academia, even though he may not have been uh, a, a formal academic, but he certainly knew the importance of academia and supported it greatly, um, as witnessed by the number of, uh, 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 the, the number of donations he had made and, and the faculty chairs and faculty departments for the Ukrainian language and culture uh, that he contributed to and supported and still supports his foundation.